It's my talk. It's about optimizing your build. Um, I do a lot of work um, at my company, Bloomberg, and I spend uh, quite a bit, well, I really want to spend all of my time doing C++, which is why I've accidentally become um, familiar with a lot of subjects around there, like source control and build tools. So what do we mean by a build? Well, in any game with a certain amount of role-playing elements, the choice of equipment and attributes for our player character forms our build. So uh, does anybody know what this game is? Yes, it's Elden Ring. Has anybody, actually, hands up, who's played Elden Ring? Okay, a few. Who's played any other FromSoft game? Okay, more. Okay, keep your hands up if it was Sekiro. Oh, I love Sekiro. Sekiro. The way Sekiro starts out so incredibly difficult, and then over the course of days, or if you're me, weeks and months, teaches you to get good at Sekiro. Awesome. Anyway, I'm not talking about Sekiro. So, so this is um, uh, this is a um, a character in Elden Ring. It's um, a prisoner class, which is one of the starting classes you can choose, um, and it's just um, my character here has just got some of the starting equipment, including a glint blade staff. And this is one of the opening areas. And if you kind of like um, pop out your your glint blade staff and cast magic glint blade. Oh, aside about challenge running, I've got really into challenge running recently. Um, and why this is important, optimizing your build, is if you want to do a challenge run. So all sorts of varieties of challenge runs. Um, so speed runs are probably the most famous. What I'm trying to do is um, complete the game Elden Ring, reaching the end credits without taking a single hit. This is like no hit running or hitless running. So far, my personal best is taking five hits throughout the entire journey. I horrible, just... Mm. Anyway, I'm having a great little fun. And it's really important to be able to optimize your damage. So if you take the starting class of prisoner and head out to an opening area and see this um, poor victim soldier, he's, he's, I don't know, he's largely dead or not quite dead anyway. So it doesn't really matter. I mean, but 172 points of damage. And the really tragic thing about this, from your player's character's point of view, is it doesn't quite kill him. And he will notice start to close the distance, and then basically cause you problems. He might even hit you, end of the run, everything's over. So how can we make things better for our character? Well, here are a few ways. First things we can do is we can get the spell Terra Magica, which will boost our magic damage by 35%, last 30 seconds, and you can get it easily from not the starting area, but one of the next areas. One problem with this. This, cost, this, costs more, this requires more intelligence, which is one of your character's stats, than you start with to cast. However, there's a solution. You can get a flask of wondrous physic and pop in an intelligence knot crystal tier, which will allow you to boost your intelligence and cast the previous spell. But we're not going to stop here. We can get the magic crowding crack tier for the same flask, which boosts damage by a further 20%. Lasts three minutes. There's another um, skill you can get on weapons. It doesn't actually matter what weapon you use. I happen to chosen a mace here, and I put Golden Vow on it. Boosts all sorts of damage by 12.5%. It's classed as an aura buff. It's important to know what sort of buffs you use, because you can only have one temporary buff of each type available. So this is an aura buff. You can use that. <laughs> then you can pick up the Curian Glint Blade Staff, which boosts the particular flavor of sorceries which Magic Glint Blade comes from by 15%. Interestingly, you don't have to cast the spell with this staff. You can cast it with another staff, which might have you know, better attributes for you. Or maybe you can't even use this staff because of the stats. You just have to hold it, and this spell is boosted. Finally, a couple of things you can get. You can pick up the Graven School Talisman um, after a little while, which boosts sorcerers by a further 4%. And finally, the piece de resistance that Hitler's lovers run is the Red Feathered Branch Sword. This boosts your attack power by a further 20%, but only when your maximum health is really low. This doesn't matter for Hitler's runners, because if you get hit, the run's over anyway. You don't need your health. It's awesome. So what does this result in? This results in 496 points of damage, a whole 188% increase. So how is this tied to software engineering? It's not. <laughs> Thank you, CD.